Good morning everybody. Well, I am going to clean this engine. Nothing spectacular here. You saw the nice freshly painted frame. I am not going to put this stinky old engine in there. So um, this needs a good clean up. Going to be doing the valve adjustment uh, later. I don't really want to be doing that on a grotty engine. So going to give this a nice good once over with some old special engine cleaner and a paintbrush. Clean it all off. What I'm aiming to do today is to clean this engine up so that I can put it into the frame and it doesn't look too bad. So, enjoy the music. Here we go. So this is... Uh a special engine and machine cleaner. I'm just spraying it on, let it soak for a bit. This will release all of the horrible greasy gunk. Once it's worked its way in a little bit, I shall be working it with a brush and then getting it all off. That's why I've got it in this, in this tub. Makes the right mess otherwise. All right, so I've humped the engine back out of that box because most of the dirty work is done, like the real grotty stuff. So now, give it a good clean up, take the covers off. So let's talk about this engine. Well, the GPZ engine came on the first GPZ 600 in 1985 with 75 brake horsepower or as they say in Germany, 75 PS. P is Pferde, Pferdestärke, PS. Basically it's brake horsepower. They do have a bit of a difference in PS and brake horsepower, but essentially it's the same. Um, 1985 in the first GPZ 600, A1 model 1985, the uh, 75 PS model came out. There were some of you out there who are new to motorcycling. Um, and uh, so I just, I will mention to you that in this block, as we would call the engine, you also have the clutch and the gearbox. It's all in one block, okay? And uh, this whole thing uh, swims in basically the same oil. So when we talk about engine oil, <clears throat> you also have to consider that that, that oil is uh, what's floating around the gearbox and the clutch. So, this is the rear side. You have the rocker cover. These are oil chamber pipes for the oil uh, lubrication to the overhead cams. Sometimes these are hard pipes. This one's a soft one, but sometimes they can be hard ones. Going down, you have your four intakes, which the carburetor sits here. Cylinder one, two, three, four intake. Underneath here you have the cam chain tensioner. This is not adjustable. This, as the name states, puts tension on the cam chain to make sure that it's always under tension and not loose. Under here runs the cam chain. This is what this little, this, this lid here underneath here. This is where the cam chains run over the cam shafts. You will see this later when I do the end of uh, the valve timing. This pipe below here is a water, water pipe, which uh, feeds water from the water pump. This is the water pump on the side. So from the water pump, the water comes up through this pipe, one into each uh, cylinder, and it goes through the water jacket in the main barrels to cool the engine. Underneath here, you have your starter. This is all the gearbox inside here. Output shaft, gear shift chain shaft. And on the, uh, on the other side, 
on this side is the clutch housing cover. Underneath here is the clutch. This side of the engine is the electronic pickups. On this side of the engine is your alternator. So that's how it's built up. Weighs about 65 kilos, so what's that, about 130 pounds. So what's in the box, as they say? Well, we'll take this lid off here. This is the rocker cover. You need to take this off when you are going to do your valves. And any other work that you want to do under here. Now you have six of these screws and they come with, this one's stuck on but they do come off. Okay, this one's, they're stuck on but I'll, so I'll leave them on but uh, they come with this uh, stainless steel washer and a rubber insert as a sealant and uh, these are quite new so I don't need to change them but if you uh, have any oil leaking from these screws then uh, it's down to these o-rings here just replace those so once you have taken the screws off you will find that it won't come off not with that little bit of a little bit of persuasion so you don't want to be going at this with a big hammer, but a nice ma mallet just to slightly tease it. It's sticking onto the uh, the rocker cover gasket, which is rubber. And um, if it's done correctly, then on the sides, in the half moons, there have been some hylomar or some other gasket sealant. So there we go. And off it comes. In this case, the C, the gasket has stayed in the head. Sometimes it falls out and basically reveals everything that's underneath here. So, just put that over here. Now I've got the engine open, I may as well go ahead and do my valve adjustment. So I need to take this cover off here so that I can get to the, uh, the rotor under the pickups. You shall see what I mean in a second when I have this off. So to do your valve clearances and checking, there are a few things you must take into consideration before you start. The first thing is, is your engine must be completely cold. The Haynes manual does state a few things like disconnecting negative cables from the terminal of the battery, but that's standard operation when you're doing anything on your bike anyway. And then you have to remove the valve cover, which we have already done, and remove the pickup coil cover, which is this cover here, which we have now also done. You have to position, and this is the first thing you have to now do, you have to position the number one piston at top dead center on the compression stroke. So you have to do this by turning the crankshaft with a, with a, a, a socket here um, and always in direction of the engine, so clockwise. And you have to turn it until the TDC mark, which you can see the markings on here, on this rotor is aligned with the timing mark on the engine, on the crankcase, which is just inside here. I'll just point to that with a little screwdriver. It's here. So this is where you have to have your line, your rotor line marks up against this marking here on the crankcase. So I shall do that. I shall turn the number one piston up to the top dead center and uh, align the TDC mark on the crankcase. The mark that we're looking at is the T on the rotor. So put a 17 mil socket on here and turn until the TDC mark is aligned with the crankshaft, uh, with the uh, crankcase. The in and the X markings on the crankshaft sprockets should now be facing each other, so I'll just show you that. Looking at the camshaft sprockets, that's these here, 
you should ha now have your in marking and your X marking facing each other. This puts us in top dead center, compression stroke for cylinder one. And from here, we can now continue with our valve checking. I'm just gonna be going from the Haynes manual, there are various others, but just to show you that in this position, you can now check half of the valves. It's the, the valves that are marked black. So all of the valves on cylinder one, the X valves on cylinder two, and the in valves on cylinder three. These can be checked. Once you've checked these, we then need to do something to the engine, move it so we can do the further eight valves. But we're in this position here. So I will now go ahead with checking those. So I'm going to start with cylinder one. This is cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three, cylinder four. This is the intake side. This is the exhaust side. And we know that we can check all of our valves on cylinder one to start with, according to the book. Uh, what you need to know now is the uh, tolerate uh, the gaps that are allowed. You will see that the the rockers do have a bit of play in them as the lobes are pointing away so there's no pressure on these and then what you need is a set of feeler gauges I like to use these ones because I've bent them I can get them into the gaps a bit easier and you need to pick the right size for the intake we are looking at a tolerance um, of 0 0.13 to 0 0.18 millimeters 0 0.13 to 0 0.18 so I'll use the 0 0.15 and basically we're measuring the gap we are adjusting the gap between the valve head and the rocker adjuster now my 0.15 goes in it drags okay so I could check I don't want it to be less than 0.13 or more than 0.18 I don't have a 0.18 but I have a, a 0.2 so that shouldn't be able to go in this is like a, a go no go this doesn't go in so it's not wider than that so I use the 1.5 that has to go in the one point the, the um, 0.2 doesn't is not allowed to go in so 0.15 goes in drags on both sides this, this has a bit more play on it this one here so I just check that the, the 0.2 doesn't go in it doesn't in this one and it doesn't in this one so I'm happy with that so as far as I'm concerned, 0.15 goes in, 0.2 won't, it's gonna be within tolerance. And as for the exhaust side, that has a bit of a slightly larger tolerance, 0.18 to 0.23. So I'll go up a scale. I'll use the, can't see this, the 0.2 as my slip gauge to check it goes in, but 0.25 would be too much. So now it's this side. So 0.2 goes in, goes in, 0.25, doesn't go in, doesn't go in. So these are good. Cylinder one is completely finished. Now we need to do the rest, but to do that we need to turn the engine. To do the rest of the valves, you now have to rotate the crankshaft one complete revolution to align the TDC mark on the rotor with the timing mark on the crankcase, which it is now, but after one full rotation, the piston number four will be at TDC compression. And then we can do the rest of the, the valve. So, socket on. And in clockwise direction, one complete rotation. to put the TDC back, the marking back on the crankcase. It's now lined up perfectly. 
as you can see and we are now in compression stroke for engine number four uh, piston number four and you will also see i just move your position you will also see that now your x and in markings are not facing each other on the uh, crankcase sprocket they are actually on the outside now so now you know that you are in uh, the, the right stroke you can continue to do the rest of the valves in this position so we're in, a, in our newly rotated position i can now continue to do the other four valves starting with the intake for number two and as we know the intake was 013 to 018 so I'll use the 015 to see that it slips through and the 020 is too big so this one should fit which it does on both but the two won't go in the next one is number four so I'm just looking at my hands manual whilst I'm doing this just to make sure I don't miss any by mistake. That one should slip in. That one should slip in. The two doesn't go in, so that's and it leaves these two on the exhaust side. So swap over to the bigger values, the 0.2, that fits in there. That fits in there, that fits in there, and that fits there. So the 2.5 won't go in, won't go in, won't go in. Well, look at that. Now you'd think that I probably readjusted this before showing you this video, but I didn't. I think the last time I did the valves on this was uh, maybe wasn't that long ago 5,000 kilometers ago so they're not up so they're all in the valves are good if you need to adjust the gaps then you need to undo the lock nut on the adjuster with an eight millimeter spanner just put the spanner on there and undo it then you have an adjusting stem and when you turn it it moves up and down and a adjusts the gap down to the, the the valve so you take your feeler gauge slide it in once you've adjusted the gap to where you need it to be there is a special tool to hold this but I just use a set of pliers like like, like these ones here or any other pliers just to hold it and then redo the lock nut up again and then checking that it hasn't moved once you've tightened it up that's how to adjust the gaps Whilst we're in here, there's something you can do here just to give you a bit of peace of mind as far as the condition of your cam chain uh, is concerned. In the hands menu, that does give you a small indication of how to check for stretch, chain stretch. And basically what you do is, according to the Haynes manual, is you set the um, camshafts so that the in marking at the rear is aligned with the crank case and the X marking at the front is lined with a crank case and then you count the amount of chain links from marking to marking. I'll show you what they mean by that now. A quick way to check to see if your cam chain has stretched is to count the links but when but the cam shafts have to be in a certain position the uh, exhaust cam shaft has to have the intake marking facing forward and the intake camshaft there is a little x marking it has to be facing backwards and then you count the links the pins basically from from edge to edge you count them and it should be 42 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 so from edge to edge that's 40 41 and 42 so it's exactly from edge to edge 42 pins that i can see there and according to the book 
and according to the book it should be 42 whereas the 42nd one is slightly under the under the edge no stretch on the chain so the chain is good and once you've adjusted everything and uh, cleaned everything and done what you want to do then put the cover back on uh, the cover can only go on in one way this is the front this is the rear and this is this gives you an indication of where your uh, thermostat sits so you know it's this side of the engine but if you were to put it around the wrong way it would physically fit but these two bolts would have nothing to screw into because there is uh, like these would be here and there's just no thread there so it can only go in one way so if you find that your bolts don't go into a thread then you've got it the wrong way around so I just do them up lightly first of all I do like to use a torque wrench on these because if you put too much pressure on them then you uh, you could break the uh, the seals the o-rings and uh, so I think the Haynes manual states 10 Newton meters well I don't think I know so that's what we'll put and I'll cross over So just check, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And that is basically it. Now I'm going to put the cover back on, but you know, most of our covers, they do look like this after about 20 or 30 or 40 years nearly. Um, Finding decent covers is difficult, but I actually found one not so long ago, which I shall be swapping out for. It does look slightly different. It's probably also not off a GPZ 600 because of the way that the GPZ is written, the small Z there. So um, I think that's actually off a 550 or something like that. But I think it looks quite nice in red, GPZ Kawasaki. So I will put in that cover back on. It fits on perfectly. Now I've just looked. I do actually need a new a new seal on this one because it has broke so I'll put it on just for now so we don't lose it but I'll have to get myself a new a new paper gasket for that so now the engines halfway clean and all sorted out um, I'm going to put the engine back in the frame and uh, this is how I do it when I'm on my own have the engine sitting on the floor and the first thing I do is lift the frame over the engine at the end of the day the engine is only held into the frame using two engine frame bolts here's the top one here's the bottom one so the aim of the game is to align the frame over the engine where I can put the bolts in it won't go straight away the engine sitting on the floor the frame will sit over the engine they won't align. I will need to uh, raise the engine so I can get to it, but cross that bridge when I come to it. But first things first, how do you get the frame, uh, the engine in the frame? Well, you don't. You put the frame over the engine like this. So put a rag down here to protect that so I've got the frame over the engine and um, I can't get the bolt through right now you'll see why I'll show you so this is where the top engine bolt will need to go through the frame and it goes through this holding bracket here through the engine and out the other side but as you can see they're not lined up I can't get the frame any lower so I'll need to bring the engine up a little bit I'll just put something under the engine to raise it slightly I'm going to use an old rear wheel cush rubber 
and just place, place it under the engine. Just tilt that slightly forward. There we go, just raise that a bit. And uh, managed to raise that whole thing enough. I can line, put that rear bolt through. So that's the top one in. I'll just put the, loo the nut on loosely. And the frame's just sort of like floating about now. And the rear, the bottom one, which also has this spacer on it. And the spacer goes on the, on the oil filler side. go that's through put the other nut on and that as they say is that if I lift the frame up now the engine comes with it look it's all in now so that's how I like to get the engine back into the frame when I'm on my own um, now I'd obviously like to get it a little bit higher, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, put the rear, uh, put the center stand on in the middle, fit the forks, and then and chuck them up off the ground. All right, you are then, guys. So um, I didn't actually show you, or I didn't film myself putting the forks in but uh, once the engine was uh, in the frame all i did was basically the reversal of the removal just um, lifted the frame up pushed the forks in put the bearing and the uh, castellated nut in just to hold it and once it was in i basically just uh, put all the nuts and bolts on where they should be torque nut up the stem nut the uh, triple t clamp bolts give them the correct uh, uh, torque uh, just fitted the brake the brake distributor line basically just to stop it from flopping around but uh, that was uh, yeah so that's engine in now and I can take it from there I put the uh, center stand on just to get it off the ground um, hasn't got the spring on it yet but that doesn't matter so much but that's the hard bit Doing that on your own is a bit of a pig, but uh, and the rest of it now it's just bolt on and here we go. So, uh, what's next? Well, from here on in, it's basically starting putting it back together. So, uh, next video will be whatever it is I do. I don't have a specific order. I could start at the back, could start at the front. Um, I'll put the rest of the frame on get the exhaust pipe on I have to order some bits and bobs I need some uh, gaskets for the side cover which we replaced earlier didn't have a decent gasket some other bits and pieces that I need to order but uh, that's it for now so uh, I hope <laughs> hope you enjoyed watching me get that engine in <laughs> ta-da for now <laughs>